heading into November. This is how the British Trainers Championship looked with Fergal O'Brien still on top with 53 winners and over £500,000 in prize money amassed. With Paul Nichols, the previous champion trainer, moving into fifth and on a bit of a surge. In the Jockeys Championship, Sean Bowen was riding high with 95 winners, closing in on that century of winners, while Brian Hughes, Harry Cobden and Sam Tristan Davis were trying to keep him within sight. Over in Ireland, Gordon Elliott and Willie Mullins were really breaking loose in the Irish Trainers Championship. Gavin Cromwell was having a good start to the season in fourth, while Philip Rothwell continued to be training winners in sixth. Jack Kennedy was getting a bit of a lead in the Jockeys Championship in Ireland with 44 winners heading into November. With Paul Townend, his usual arrival in this sphere, making good ground on 35 winners back in fourth. November is a month to savour with Grade 1 action, both sides of the Irish Sea, and the British Trainers' Championship hotting up. The month started in Stratford, where Sarah Humphrey looked to have a smart oars on her hands, with Nickelback dominating again from the front. He's two from two over fences. Nickelback an all-the-way winner. Henry Daly unleashed smart bumper performer Bowens Park on hurdling debut on the same card, and he didn't disappoint. Smart prospect, Bowens Park's going to win hands down on his debut over hurdles for Henry Daly, Richard Patrick in the famous Herrings Racing Colours. Bowens Park makes a winning start over jumps. Over in Ireland, the champion bumper form was on show, but Lecky Watson made odds on backers sweat. And on the near side, Lecky Watson and Rush Mount, these two pressure side, Shannon Royale, and at the finish, Lecky Watson is lifted home. First time three miles, so he showed a lovely attitude to, to pull out again and, and hold off second horse. The next stop was Weatherby for the Bet365 Charlie Hall Chase, and the eagerly anticipated return of Brave Man's Game. They're off. Feature race of the day here at Weatherby. It's the 53rd running of the Bet365 Charlie Hall Chase. They come to the first of the open ditches and a whopping jump there from Ahoy Senor. And they head on down past the packed enclosures with a circuit left to go. Paint the green by a length. Brave Man's Game traveling strongly is in second, but all five still holding some sort of chance as they round the corner for home. As they come to three out, Sam Brown went for it along the inside. Two out, Brave Man's Game in front. One more fence left to jump. It is Brave Man's Game with the lead. Steady into it, jumped it well. El Dorado Allen moves through to press Sam Brown for second. Now the leader shaken up on the run to the line. It is Brave Man's Game under Harry Cobden, uh, drawing away by four lengths. And it's Brave Man's Game to win the Charlie Hall. Brave Man's Game returned to Weatherby to try and retain his Charlie Hall chase crown. And for the most part, everything went to plan. At the second fence, jumps it well, as does Brave Man's Game. Coming now to the 11th fence, Brave Man's Game over well. Brave Man's Game jumping really well. And it is Brave Man's Game under Harry Cobden. Over it nimbly. And Brave Man's Game goes strongly down towards two out. But it all went wrong at the final fence. Big jump at the last from Brave Man's Game. He was a little too bold, and now Cobden has to go through the gears as Gentleman's Game is given an opportunity, and he's taking it. Gentleman's Game moves on from Brave Man's Game, and that final fence error has proved oh so costly, and it's a winner for Ireland in the Charlie Hall. It's Gentleman's Game under Darrow O'Keefe, who salutes the crowd. Well, going to the last, like it's, it was, I, I could see Harry was biding his time and, and waiting, you know, to, to foot before he committed, and obviously he'd missed it, and I pinned it, but, um, you know, as I said, I, I, I still thought my lad would keep finding and finding him, but but um, obviously the mistake played a huge part of it in the other horses, but um, as I said, my lad winged it, and yeah, he galloped the whole way to the line. There was further good action on the card at Weatherby, which included Mayor's Novice Hurdle winner of last year, You Wear It Well, making her seasonal reappearance, where she dug down deep to defy Lucia in rain-softening conditions. Alongside that, there was grade two success for Gary Moore and Caelan Quinn, who teamed up with Botox Has to win the West Yorkshire Hurdle. A win that would have meant plenty to his regular pilot, Caelan Quinn. He's unbelievable. Um, I'm speechless, to be honest. The, what a performance that is. Exciting novice hurdles within Divar Blue and grade two bumper score Florida Dreams 
taking all the attention going into the opening novel hurdle on the card. However, it was the Lucinda Russell trained Primoz who was bought expensively that impressed. Holly Murphy was out of luck within Divar Blue, but he had the very talented Little Miss Dante to rely upon to get himself back in the winner's enclosure with his close relation of Go Dante winning impressively on Hurdling debut. Ender Boulder is usually known for his cross-country exploits. However, this time he had a novice hurdle winner in a listed race at Cork. Solitary man out in front will win in good style, completing a double for Darrow Keefe, wins by about two and a half. I honestly don't know, Johnny, if whether we're going to give him a break now and see how he is in, in three weeks' time. You know, that Leopard Sound comes up good as well. He does need good ground, you know, I and mean, he got away with it here today, but um, he's a different boy on, on quicker ground. Also on the court card, let's be clear about it, impressed. But on the run in, let's be clear about it, stretching clear is going to win the Paddy Power Feel Like a Favourite Novice Chase. If you go back to his bumper farm, he's got a very, very good bumper farm and uh, so look, I'm delighted to see him show my potential, you know. As they head down to the final fence, called the June towards the far side of the leading pair. The Court Grand National provided a thriller. They'll fight it out ahead of Glen Quinn Castle. 100 yards to race, called the June far side, Sir Bob stand side. As they go to the line, neck and neck as they go to the line, it's very tight. Ferry House hosted a competitive beginner's chase with Albert Bartlett III, Xander Clegane. It's Imagine still going along in the lead. Over the last goes Imagine from Pinkerton. Gordon Elliott looks like he's got an exciting two-mile novice chaser. But up towards the finish, Imagine looks exciting over fences, has made all. The 2023 Martin Pipe winner Iroko was making his chasing debut. He's making a great two winner, Golden Sun, look pretty ordinary here. And that's a pretty sensational chasing debut. A faultless start to life over fences for Iroko, but unfortunately, Oliver Greenhall and Josh Guerrero later revealed that he'd been ruled out for the season. It's fat and glory, making virtually all. Two days later at Clonmel, it promised to be a very good day's racing, with Gordon Elliott landing the first, but the day was dominated by Willie Mott. It's a reappearance winning run in the T.A. Morris Memorial for Allegory de Vassy and Paul Townen. It was then time for a day that racing fans have been waiting for. The return of 2021 and 2022 Ryanair chase hero, Alaho. Alaho and Paul Townen near the final fence and over safely from Shannon Dillon. Up the hill towards the finish, it's Alaho making light of a long injury absence in the Clonmel Oil Chase, bringing up a big double on the day for Paul Townen and Willie Mullins. It's another one too for Willie with Janadil's second. Brilliant to get him back on the track, um, you know, what he's achieved so far and hopefully he's not finished yet, but uh, just to get him back and, and, and on the race course was, uh, was exciting and, you know, he, he duly obliged as well. Alaho's return impressed Ruby Walsh on the road to Cheltenham. He'll improve plenty and like he was very workmanlike when he won a John Darkland with Patrick and bolted in a, in a Ryanair. He has been workmanlike in the past on his first run. Ruby Walsh, best known for skill, determination and bravery, but Cheltenham's cold snap got the better of him. Right, I've given in and gone to fill gloves. <laughs> you can get yours. It's soft. You can get yours. <laughs> Do you know what I'm crying about? I brought bigger socks and didn't put them on. Well, that was just daft. <laughs> I've got two pairs of socks on and a pair of tights. <laughs> Such a rookie error. Take notes, Ruby. Take notes. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're ready. ready to go. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Mightn't look it, but we are. <laughs> Mightn't sound it, but we are. From one horse who has achieved it all, it was then time to turn to Newbury, and Nicky Henderson was unleashing a smart novice in Wilmount. He's barely off the bridle. What a smart prospect Wilmount has to be now. It's a winning debut over Timber. No, that was great. Um, gave me a lovely feel, actually. There wasn't much pace on, so I was quite happy just to let him roll away down the back. He pricked his ears nicely, and then quickened uh, as we came into the straight. I thought he jumped very well. He's slick when he needed to be and um, could fiddle away as well, which was great. Over at Exeter and Holden Gold Cup Day, we were treated to a fascinating novice chase. 
Paul Nichols is renowned for his staying chases and Stay Away Fay, the 2023 Albert Bartlett winner, was made to work hard to score first time. I, I've got to say I was a bit worried all week that I thought he looked big and well and he improved for a run and you know we almost expect too much from these horses on their first run and you've got to have them ready to do that but also ready to improve and there's lots to come from him. Sir de Lutz, the grey who's clear by five legs up the running for Freddie Ginger who's going to win it for Joe Tizard driven out he's getting a bit tired but he wins the Holden Gold Cup. Elixir de Nuts lands the Holden Gold Cup on a big day for Joe Tizard and young rider Freddie Ginger. This here, oh, this this by far is like top to all. Um, I had a few. I, I was, I was, I've had two seasons, one one point and one under rules last season. It was all gone well. I, I was a bit steady last season with like, injuries and so what. Um, but this season, I've had, I've had, I've had a few nice winners lately, and yeah, and yeah, and this one here yeah, definitely, yeah, the biggest. I did enjoy that. I mean, especially with Fred riding it, and he, and he gave it as the best ride I've seen. I've seen him give a horse. You know, he rode him exactly how I asked him to. Kept asking him, like a young 17-year-old does. And um, <laughs> you know, it made me and Dad. Dad's here today as well, so it made us a bit emotional, to be honest. With Down Royal on the horizon, it was time for Gordon Elliott to flex his muscles. And the unbeaten record remains as brighter days ahead. It's a Gordon Elliott hat trick in the first three races. Brighter days ahead, four from four, and more to come. I think she's a proper mirror, Gary. Like, you know, she's still a lot to learn. She's still very green, but uh, she's a proper mirror, so she's. Another one for Gordon Elliott. Jack Kennedy pushes out Irish Point. Founder 50 is quickening readily here from Colonel Mustard and Lamal Mazon. And Founder 50 impresses here in his beginner's debut. It's four for Jack, it's five for Gordon with another one to go. It's going to be another winning favourite in the afternoon, but as Firefox goes to the line, it's six for Gordon Elliott on day one of Down Royal. Six winners on a memorable day for Gordon Elliott, and he was hoping things weren't going to slow down. Finally, what's your best chance of a winner on Saturday's car? Uh, do, do, do. Sure, down memory lane, they won't probably. Or in the mid, not. Okay. Sorry. We've got Sorry. Loads, of chances, loads of chances. You have me on the spot, Gary. Okay. Down memory lane was the chosen one for Saturday's card. And who should doubt Gordon? The favourite's going to oblige in the second. It's two from two in the second race for Gordon Elliott. Down memory lane, unbeaten still. Just like day one, the winning didn't stop there for Gordon. Holds the Goddard Tour to the line. It's going to be a hat trick for Gordon Elliott from three. Then it was time for the first taste of Grade 1 action this season. And the Labrooks champion chase didn't disappoint. And they're racing for the Ladbroke Champion Chase over three miles, grade one contest, and it's conflated. Going to rise in front from Jerry Colomb, who put down over that one. Now Jerry Colomb has asked for maximum effort out of Novice Company, and we tip the tank now. Back in third is Manila Indo, and Invo Alain is trying to stay on. Conflated his game in front. Jerry Colomb has asked for full effort. Now Invo Alain is trying to close the gap, and Manila Indo. Oh, the quartet go towards the second last, but Conflated just about with the advantage. Jumps across the fence, and now Jerry Colomb has to switch in. Invo Alain is staying on powerfully at Down Royal again, and it's Conflated the near side. Invo Alain the centre to the last, Envoilin gets low, Conflated is trying to rally on the near side, it's Envoilin and Conflated who are battling strongly to the line, Jerry Colomb is trying to stay on again for a three-way run, Conflated, Envoilin and Jerry Colomb to the line, it's very tight, Jerry Colomb has gone up and just from Envoilin in second. A remarkable 11 wins from 14 races for Gordon Elliott at this year's two-day Labrooks Champion Chase meeting. Uh, he's a very tough horse, Gary, you know, and very honest horse. Um, you know, he's he's improving the whole time, and there's a lot of improvement in today. Look, he's a long way to go to be beating Gallop and Champs and that, but we know he's went well in Cheltenham. Um, I think the three mile two will suit him, so we'll, we'll, we'll dream on you for another while. Willie Mullins wasn't going to let Gordon Elliott have it all his way, and he unleashed Il Atlantique at Gorham Park. And at the final flight, Il Atlantique, Paul Town, and over clear from dying by the car no time to wait and choose his glory they're well well strung out Eel Atlantic who was smart in bumpers wins hands down for Paul Town and Willie Mullins. Over at Wing Canton Blackjack Magic won the 60 second running of the Badger Bear Handicap Chase for Anthony Honeyball Three under three, five is trying hard Blackjack Magic though has the lead and Blackjack Magic is going to hold him off and Blackjack Magic is going to win the 60 second running of the Badger Bear Chase but he just got in a lovely river and he just jumped from fence to fence. I don't think he, I don't think he made any mistake. Four went to post in the elite hurdle, but this time it went to the champion trainer. And Rubo is going to win this race for Paul Nichols, a ninth elite hurdle for Paul, a second for Harry Cobden, four on the day for Paul Nichols. At Nace the next day, there were two nice novices running for Henry de Bromet.
150 yards to go, and it's late steel getting on top from King of Kingsfield. Must a level over there, well clear of Syracuse, do. And it is Slade Steel kicking clear. A useful bumper performer makes a winning jump stable for Rachel Blackmore and Henry de Bromid. Mahan's way is chased in the closing stages by stable companion Chikorin, who's not closing the gap. And then Prince Palace spread boss Ted Big Shoe and Park the Giant. But it's Mahan way. Mahan's way sees Rachel Blackmore and Henry de Bromid. Slade Steel won really nicely. Uh, obviously, had good bumper form last year and uh, delighted with that. This guy, yeah, it was tough for him, um, and uh, uh, but really toughed it out. He's a real staying horse and uh, uh, delighted uh, for Chibli. Yeah, it was great. It was a treble on the day for Willie Mullins, who scored in grade three company with Dino Blue. But it's Dino Blue keeping winning ways on seasonal return in the Barberstown Castle. Willie also struck in a very competitive beginner's chase. Racing just outside the final furlong, Grange Clare West is the leader and the one they've got to go and pass from Hartwood and Corbett's Cross and deep in the closing stages, Grange Clare West looks to have all angles covered as they run up to the finish. It's a winning first day out over fences for Grange Clare West. Willie's fine form continued at Punchestown the following Thursday, this time with two exciting novices, It's For Me and Loch Lynn. It's, it's for me in front and holding Caldwell Potter, ascending will be third. The second maiden hurdle also goes the way of Paul Town and Willie Mullins as Loch Glen has made just about all. Over at Kempton, Queen's Gamble struck on her first start over hurdles for new trainer Harry Derham. I obviously didn't know her until this season but it was abundantly clear to me that she was well above average from the start. It was then time for the Cheltenham November meeting. Three days of great racing, starting with an upset in a grade two. Three still in line as they approach the winning post. And this Manila Missile, who has the advantage here with Adam Wedge. And Manila Missile takes a big step up in quality and wins. We, we half had an inkling that we, we hoped he could be OK. So uh, it was lovely to see him do that. Juvenile wins don't get much more impressive than Burdett Road in the Triumph Trial. On Braden Fasher is the one to catch here as they come round the home turn, got a three length lead. The white cap in Milantino has moved into second in third gifted angel. Here's Burdett Road coming on the right now in the yellow with a strong challenge as well. On Braden Fasher moves down towards the final obstacle, gets over it, leading now to Burdett Road who's moved into second place. Milantino's behind that in third, up the hill they come. In orange on Braden Fasher, the yellow jacket though of Burdett Road has Storm through the lead. This was a cool ride from Harry Compton. Burdett Road has remained unbeaten as one very impressively. When I pressed the button, turning, turning in, and he jumped the last well and quickened up nicely. Has Paul got anything that might mean you might not be able to ride it? Um, he's, he's got a few juveniles, probably none quite as good as that lad. Broadway boy, Tom Bellamy asking for more. This horse keeps on giving more. Look, here he goes, four or five lengths ahead as they come to the home turn. Nigel Twiston Davies was mob-handed in the listed novices chase. Pings the second last. Final fence, Broadway boy up and over safely. Jumped every fence in front here, landed 10, 12 lengths ahead. We've all been caught in second. Good risk and all, and Mr. Coffee a battle for third. Broadway boy, a little weary maybe, but he uh, take one serious error. But the jumping otherwise was good. He sat out in front. He's made all. Broadway boy and Tom Bellamy the winners. I thought it was very impressive because he beat our other horse by a long way, and, and, and he's pretty good. So, uh, yeah, happy days. A final flight scare didn't deny Stage Star in the Paddy Power. Stage star and Harry Compton in front are going to make all the running to win the Paddy Power Gold Cup. Incredibly tough horse. He, you know, run till he couldn't run anymore. And um, we're just grateful to have him and I'm grateful to ride him. Buddy One provided a memorable day for the Gilligans. Buddy One, a length and a half in front. The newest one is closing. Buddy One gets to the line in front though. To be honest, I thought he was never going to pass the line in front and I was waiting for something to come to me, but fair to the heart, he was game and he'd done it easily enough today. He had well able for the £9 increase, so it's great, unbelievable stuff of dreams are made of. And to come here 
with your son riding him, another son leading him up. My other two sons are here, my brother is here. Um, my wife is at home keeping the show going. So, uh, yeah, it's a pity she isn't here. It would be great if she was here. John Bon was foot perfect on his return in the Schlur. Ridden out towards the line, John Bon it is in front, but he's going to win the Schlur chase. I, I think he's growing up. I think he's grown up a lot. He's a horse that used to get himself in a bit of a tiz was about life, but yeah, I can. Yeah, I don't think he was necessarily at his best in the arc, but no, excuse the other horse was better than we were on the day, and that is that's it that was fair for all to see. We weren't. On that day, we weren't good enough, but we we'll, won't stop us trying again. The success didn't stop there for Nicky Henderson. It is Iberico Lord and Nico de Boinville beginning to pull clear to un win the Univac Great Bird. I wouldn't know where he'd go or where he's going to finish up, but he's talented. Over at Navin, we had the return of a real fan favourite. It's nip and tuck. Bob Ollinger's getting up on the inside and is showing some of his old sparkle in the last fall and hurdle as he goes one better than last year. I, mean, I was pretty nervous throughout, you know, um, when you see what he's doing at home and we can't, weren't replicating it on the track. It's it's lovely to see him go and do something, you know, something nice. He looks back to his old self there today. Captain Guinness at the last, over and clear. It wasn't the only winner on the day for Henry de Bromhead. It's the same winner as last year. Captain Guinness wins back to back for Trez. The most anticipated race on the card was the beginner's chase, which saw the chasing debuts of both In the Pocket and Fasal Vega. Fasal Vega up the hill from San Felician and In the Pocket. All angles covered as Fasal Vega and Paul Tannen went first time out over fences for Willie Mullins. As I say, when, when we got competitive and the race started, uh, I liked what I felt. At Exeter, we saw a future star. As they reached the last Gidley part by three lengths, once again, range was very clumsy. Salt Rock jumped it third as they race up the running towards the line. It's doubles for Johnny Burke and Harry Fry as Gidley Park goes on to win readily. Yeah, you just like to remind yourself every now and again this. This is what this game's about, finding, finding nice horses, uh, hopefully, that have got big days ahead of them and big future ahead of them. So, I mean, it's, it is very early days, but um, this is what we all do it for, is try and find unearthed horses that the potential to hopefully be very good. It was a novice chasing performance of the ages at Furless. Jumped it beautifully from Digby, a long way clear of Gold Bullion, and on the run in, classical dream. It's been smooth sailing on Chase Table for star turn, classical dream in Paul Town. And there was lots of talk about Mr. Policeman going chasing this season, and we got a first glimpse of him in action over the bigger obstacles at Ferriers. Mr. Policeman is inching up on the inside with 50 yards to go, and it's Mr. Policeman who will get there by three parts of a length. In other news, Nicky Henderson opted to use the 1965 chaser Ascot as opposed to the Betfair chase for his star chaser Shishkin. Little was he aware, Shishkin had other ideas and refused to race. One more left to jump for Harry and Dan Skelton. And he's over neatly. It was a sunny day at Haydock for the Betfair Chase Day, and we saw a very exciting novice chaser in Grey Dawning. Grey Dawning has absolutely poleaxed them. Where next, Potto Star maybe boxing there or not? No, I think just I think he's a slight preference for left-handed. We will obviously have to go right-handed at some point, but to be honest with you, when you look into the new year and Warwick you know, he's a 50 yeah. grand graded race on your doorstep. I think we'll go to that. Yeah. That's not me ducking a grade one. No yeah. problem. I'll have a go at stair fate, away fate later in the year. But uh, yeah, he's a very, very nice horse. In the feature bet fair chase, a fascinating storyline had been building all week, with Harry Cobden opting to go to Ascot to ride Pick Dory, leaving Daryl Jacob with the mount on Brave Man's Game. Brave Man's Game stood off that one, jumped it well, forced an error really from. Uh, Royal Pagai, who got close to it. 
Things seem to be going smoothly for the King George winner. Protectorat, his biggest rival in the market, wasn't travelling with his usual zest. Into the straight they come, 30 miles an hour, on down towards the fourth last. However, Protectorat wasn't the one that Daryl needed to be worried about. Royal Pagoy, two lengths ahead at the last, spring heels, came up out of Deutsch's hands. Brave man's game is chasing, but he's surely chasing shadows now. Korak Rambler is back in third, and at the track that he's made his own, Royal Pagai gets his biggest success yet, and Venetia Williams is the first female trainer to win the Betfair chase. Charlie Deutsch punches the air. Just bringing out some really nice horses, yeah. and uh, it just shows you don't win grade ones um, if you're not good at what you do. We, we came hoping that he'd run well, but you know, you, you spend all week reading the quotes from the other trainers and you know, the confidence training. But um, you know, our horses by and large are running well, so you know, that gives you a bit of a lift. But um, yeah, I'm thrilled with the horse. It was a superstart to the new Punchestown Morgiana meeting for Gordon Elliott, unleashing smart juvenile Mighty Bandit. It didn't take long for Willie Mullins to get on the board, with Predator's Gold impressing. Predator's Gold coming into the last under Paul Town and, and jumped it big, extending that advantage over Mossy Fen Park, Gentong Enki, Brainus Nesgrieb and then Dr Elvis, but it's Predator's Gold who's going to remain unbeaten over the Punchestown circuit, making it two out of two. Smoothly does it. First time over fences, it's nothing but a Saturday stroll here at Punchestown for Gaelic Warrior, bringing up a quick part of Paul Town and Willie Mullins. Gaelic Warrior reached a very high ceiling over hurdles last season and he made his chase debut, leaving trainer Willie Mullins speechless. What he did before that was, to me, was gobsmacking anyhow. It was time for the return of Stateman. It is Stateman over the dance from Echoes and Rain. In third is Pike Piper and then Feast to Dairy. 150 yards to go and it is Stateman dominating successive Unibet Morgianas for Paul Town and Willie Mullins. A cracking day one treble for them. Echoes and Rain follows in a stable companion. Yeah, he's a pleasure to do at and with. Um, he's a horse. I don't know, for some reason, I, I just I, I love riding him. and. He's just, I suppose, he's he's so nice and kind to do anything with that uh, he's one that uh, I, I just really like riding, yeah. The Gold Cup winner was next. And that off in the John Durkin Memorial Punchestown Grade 1 chase. And it proved to be a cracker in the John Durk. Two fences left to jump and it's four abreast, appreciate it. And Martin Brazel's solo charge, fast or slow, got up. The inside, Galapande Shop is switching between them. Faster, slow on the inside. He's inching up as they go to the line. Faster, slow has lifted him from appreciated and Galapande Shop. The light of it, him, he, um, you know, he's very professional. It's great horse to jump. Doesn't waste too much time in the air. Loves, loves what he does. You know, he's, he's a lot of boxes you can tick, and sure, that's what makes a good horse. The British Trainers' Championship looked like this come the end of November with Paul Nichols rising to the top at over £900,000 with Dan Skelton, his former assistant, back in second. In the British Jockeys' Championship, Sean Bowen had broken the century marker on 105 winners while Harry Cobden, Sam Tristan Davis and Brian Hughes were making sure Bowen didn't get too far away. In the Irish Trainers' Championship, Gordon Elliott was flying high alongside Willie Mullins as they continued to dominate the jump scene. In the Irish Jockeys' Championship, Jack Kennedy was a runaway leader on 78 winners, while Paul Townend was chasing him hard on 54 back in second. 